Uh, hello uh, today in this video I will be talking about the types of the dehydration which primarily include the isotonic type the hypertonic type of dehydration and the hypotonic type of dehydration first I will be talking about some uh, normal and basic details about the uh, quantities of the fluid in our body so uh, total body water and our body we have about 60 percent of the body weight and for a 70 kg man we have approximately 42 liters of the water and the intracellular fluid which is about 40 percent of the body weight and it is approximately about 28 liters in a 70 kg male or female and the extracellular fluid is about 20% of the body weight which is about uh, which is about 14 liters so for dehydration topic we need to only know about the intracellular fluid which is about 28 liters and the extracellular fluid which is about 14 liters so moving on to the type of dehydration we'll be first of all talking about the isotonic type of dehydration so for discussing the isotonic type of dehydration i first will construct a normal diagram of the compart uh, body fluid compartment so this is our compartment of the extracellular fluid which is about 14 liters mentioned here and the intracellular fluid we have about 20 Eight liters and the osmolarity maximum osmolarity normal osmolarity of the body is 300 milliosmoles per liter okay so what happens in isotonic type of dehydration there is the equal loss of both the sodium and the water from extracellular fluid as there is equal loss of sodium and water from the extracellular fluid the primarily there is the shrinkage of the extracellular fluid as there is low loss of water but as there is there are equal losses of both the sodium and the water sodium and water equal losses uh, what happens the extracellular fluid compartment remains isotonic despite the loss of both the sodium and water because there are equal disturbances there is equal loss of both the sodium and water as the extracellular fluid compartment is isotonic there is no net movement of the water from the intracellular to the extracellular fluid compartment and therefore the extracellular compartment remains the same so there and uh, talking about the osmolarity the osmolarity of both the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid compartment remains totally normal in case of isotonic dehydration so the primarily abnormality in isotonic dehydration um, we get to see is that there is extracellular fluid compartment shrinkage only and there is no intracellular fluid compartment shrinkage no shrinkage only extracellular fluid compartment shrinkage and there uh, the osmolarity in both the intracellular and the extracellular fl fluid compartments remains same examples certain examples is first of all the primarily and the main important example is burn isotonic dehydration is always a seen in clinical uh, presentation in people with burns the second example is uh, vomiting due to any upper gi obstruction urinal obstruction the type of dehydration commonly accompanied is uh, the uh, isotonic dehydration type uh, vomiting can cause a various other type of uh, uh, dehydration also but primarily uh, the, uh, we can see that vomiting primarily causes isotonic dehydration and burns and vomiting uh, or obstruction uh, uh, causes isotonic dehydration moving with the second type of dehydration which is the hypertonic type of dehydration again constructing the body compartment this is the extracellular fluid this is the intracellular fluid 14 and 28 liters so what happens in a hypertonic type of dehydration there is more loss of water than the sodium there is 
more water loss than the sodium as there is more water loss there is subsequent shrinkage of the extracellular fluid compartment and also as there is more water loss the uh, uh, the extracellular fluid compartment osmolarity increases further as the uh, as the what i can say is uh, as the osmolarity of the, as the extracellular fluid compartment becomes hypertonic there is subsequently uh, uh, gradient water movement there is water movement from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid and subsequently there is the shrinkage of the intracellular fluid compartment also and also the tonicity of the intracellular fluid compartment rises and this is the diagram we get to see in case of hypertonic type of dehydration okay so what happens in hypertonic dehydration to summarize there is extracellular fluid uh, compartment shrinkage primarily extracellular fluid compartment shrinkage and secondarily there is intracellular fluid compartment shrinkage due to the net movement of the water from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid as the extracellular fluid compartment mm, uh, is becoming uh, extracellular fluid compartment is having less water because of subsequent water loss more than sodium and tonicity rises because already mentioned there is more water loss than sodium and examples of the hypertonic dehydration type is primarily the most important is diabetes insipidus insipidus because there is more water loss from the collecting duct uh, and the kidney collecting tubules in the kidney uh, than sodium so diabetes insipidus is the most important example in case of hypertonic dehydration or uh, diabetes mellitus to some extent can also cause what hypertonic type of dehydration moving for the last type of dehydration last type of dehydration we have the hypertonic type of dehydration again constructing the fluid compartments this is uh, extracellular fluid intracellular fluid as there is hypotonic type of dehydration there is sodium more sodium loss than what it, it is opposite to the type of hypertonic dehydration so in hypotonic there is more sodium loss than water okay so when there is more sodium loss than water what happens is the extracellular fluid compartments becomes what the extracellular fluid uh, becomes the extracellular fluid becomes hypertonic because there is more sodium loss but this is dehydration so extracellular fluid compartment is going to shrink furthermore as the extracellular fluid compartments becomes um, hypertonic there is subsequently movement of the water from extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid compartment and uh, there is uh, intracellular fluid compartment becomes increased so this is the type of diagram we are going to see uh, in case of hypertonic type of dehydration uh, uh, there is extracellular fluid hypertonic uh, which results in increase of the intracellular fluid compartment because of the shift of the water from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid it is quite obvious uh, and the osmolarity of both the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid compartment decreases because there is more sodium loss and secondly uh, there is movement of the water from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid so secondly the ICF osmolarity also decreases so examples of this type of condition is there is low aldosterone production in the body uh, adrenal cortex abnormality adrenal abnormalities and secondly is due to the low levels of the cortisol so the uh, this was all about the types of dehydration